Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris Dixon here, and I've actually been doing a lot of research on the new Canon Vixia HF S21. Um, I actually came across a great little segment on CNET.com where they gave their all-out review on it. Uh, I figured this would benefit you guys, so hopefully you guys liked the review as much as I did. Uh, the Canon has actually got a lot of great little features, so uh, please check it out. Hi, I'm Lori Grunin, Senior Editor with CNET, and this is the Canon Vixia HFS 21. Canon's 2010 Vixia HFS series of AVC HD camcorders consists of three models that, as usual, differ only by memory configuration, as well as the addition of an EVF in this, the highest end model. Their key specs remain the same as their predecessors, with the same 10x zoom lens and 8 megapixel CMOS sensor but they now incorporate Canon's latest optical image stabilization technologies, including the new powered IS capability for improved stabilization at the telephoto end. As the largest and heaviest models in their class, the HFS2 series models are nevertheless comfortable to hold and use and will still fit into a roomy jacket pocket. Each model has a set of small rubberized bumpers on the top in front of the zoom switch that give you a little extra grip, which is a very nice design touch. While it's nice to have a pair of slots, I suspect this is partly Canon's way of compensating for the camcorder's lack of SDXC support. You'd need two 32GB SDHC cards to get 64GB, the minimum size SDXC card. The component, composite headphone, and wired remote jacks are underneath the slide-down cover in the LCD recess. I think the headphone jack location is awkward for shooters who use the headphones and EVF simultaneously while recording. Not to mention the drain on the already underpowered battery of using the EVF and the LCD at the same time. Further forward are the accessory shoe and a pop-up flash video light combination. The stereo mics rest on either side of the large lens barrel, with a mic input just below the front strap connector. On the grip side of the camcorder is a small auto manual switch and a flip-up cover under which the mini HDMI and USB connectors reside. Like the older models, the strap tends to get in the way when connecting devices. The battery recess is clearly designed to hold a bigger battery, and I suggest you budget $7,500 for the higher capacity battery, because the supplied 890 milliamp hour model usually lasts less than an hour. Canon's manual control dial functions the same way as Sony's. You press and hold the center button to select the dial's operation. Manual focus, exposure compensation, aperture or shutter, mic level, and automatic gain control limit. The latter caps the signal boosting in low light to minimize visual noise. Thanks to the large high resolution LCD and big virtual buttons, the bulk of the interface is one of the most streamlined and easy to use that I've seen on a camcorder. The LCD is pretty easily viewed in direct sunlight, although it's shiny and reflective so you'll have to play with the angle a bit. The only place where the interface falls short is in the menu system, which is insanely frustrating to use. The first issue is the scroll area. It's on the inside edge, so your hand blocks the display while you're scrolling. The second issue is the multi-touch-like scroll operations that make it impossible to accurately move a single entry at a time. The low-resolution EVF is better than nothing, which is what the other two models offer, but it's pretty coarse for manual focus. But between the focus assist ma magnification and peaking for edge detection, it's relatively usable. Zoom feels very nice, and it's pretty easy to maintain a steady zoom rate with it. I did run into a few frustrating situations where the autofocus guessed wrong about the subject, but once it locked onto the correct subject, it didn't lose it. In part, this is probably because of the speed of the autofocus. It's pretty zippy. Like Sony, Canon defaults the video quality to the second worst option. 7 megabits per second at a not full HD 1440 by 1080 pixel resolution. That means the video you get out of the box looks like something you'd pay about $400 for, rather than the $700 plus you probably shelled out for one of these models. But in decent light and at its best, and even second best modes, the video looks quite good. It's probably the sharpest among its competitors. The audio does record with excellent clarity. If you're a video hobbyist or a pro looking for something portable to complement your workhorse equipment, the Canavixia HFS21 is a solid choice. But if you don't need the more subtle aspects of the manual controls, then it's more expensive than it's worth. Its cheaper, but EVF-free siblings, 
the HFS-20 and HFS-200 are good, but they're also overpriced compared with their competitive models from Sony and Panasonic. If you can live without the EVF, I'd go for the cheapest of the three, the HFS-200. I'm Lori Grunin, and this is the Canon Vixia HFS-21.